begin, of course, with the group chief executive officer of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, Mary Kakari, saying that the NNPC, or disclosing as a, as a corporation, grew its profit after tax from 287 billion naira in 2020 to 674 billion in 2021. He disclosed this at a press conference in Abuja, said the profit was contained in the group audited financial statement of the oil firm for the year ended December 31st, 2021. Those are the numbers up there. Joining us to discuss further from uh, Abuja is Mr. Uma Ajia, who is I Ajia, who is the chief financial officer of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, so first off, uh, many are congratulating the NNPC on its transparency as the company moves to global reporting standards, which expects quarterly reporting and you know comparison with forecasts. What are your thoughts on the reporting improvements and when will you get to quarterly reporting and forecasts? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, yes, uh, clearly, uh, our fundamental aspirations uh, to be transparent and accountable. And we have consistently delivered on this over the last uh, few years or so that we've been uh, in the mantle of leadership uh, within the corporation and now the limited liability company. And as you know, transiting into a limited liability company also comes with it a lot of responsibilities and amongst reporting. So that is one responsibility that we must also begin to deliver uh, to, through our board of directors, uh, uh, the state of affairs of the company on a quarterly basis. All right, thank you so much for that. Um, well, looking at your revenue breakdown here with risk, can you talk us through the triggers for what led to the improvement in revenue for the company for 2021? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I think the revenue uh, uh, basically was uh, driven mainly by price uh, uh, differential in the sense that uh, in terms of average uh, oil production, we're a little bit below what we, we, our performance in 2020. However, as you know, the price environment uh, in 2021 also was than 2020, because 2020 had still the remnants of the COVID uh, price uh, collapse. So, so in reality, uh, our performance is driven by two factors. One is the price, and secondly, has to do with our cost optimization drive, uh, in which uh, we normally uh, uh, expect that business uh, can only spend a percentage of their revenues, uh, and that has uh, worked well uh, through automation. And the fact that also that uh, people uh, or, or businesses uh, can no longer uh, uh, subsidize other businesses. So. There is autonomy of uh, financial performance, and therefore each and every business is being held accountable. Uh, and that has helped us to show up revenues and also drive down costs. Thank you so much for that. What, what do you say in response to analysts that say NMPC is underperforming compared to its peers? When you look at other state oil companies um, in other nations that have you know, benefited from higher oil prices. Yeah, in a way they are right, but also because also they don't have uh, so much information about what NNPC's uh, hindrances were uh, that hindered its performance over the years. Uh, the fact remains, uh, with the PIA now in place, uh, such uh, hindrances have been removed, and therefore NNPC as a limited liability company it will be able to do what other uh, uh, companies, its peers, are doing and as such, uh, should be comparative in terms of performance and delivery of profits and dividends to its shareholders. Uh, yes, indeed, uh, 674 billion Naira is, is uh, relatively low uh, in, in consideration of the assets uh, in our position. But uh, those hindrances that the PIA has eliminated now will make us to deliver uh, profits uh, that should be in billions of dollars.
Okay, I, I want to go back to your highlights again. I want to ask you about the tax credit that you got for fiscal year 2021. Because if you look at the highlights, your profit before tax, I think, was about 23% lower in 2021 than what it was in 2020. But your, your profit after tax, your profit after tax was higher due to a tax break that you got, rather a tax credit. Um, some are wondering, you know, why the NNPC will be getting a tax break in this period of time when the government is hard pressed for revenue. So can you talk us through as far as that tax credit? Because that's what boosted your uh, profit after tax. Yes, absolutely. But you know, tax is also dependent upon tax laws. So the applicability of tax and tax payable uh, has to be consistent with what the tax laws have provided for. So it's a reconciliation. It's not a tax break. It's a tax credit arising from reconciliation between ourselves and the federal annual revenue, as well as also uh, uh, reconciliations between us and uh, the uh, uh, upstream regulator. So it's, 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 it's a combination of uh, several factors that saw us to the, the profit level that we have uh, uh, been able to publish. All right, speaking of uh, profit levels, uh, I want to ask you about under recovery. Um, we went through the financials, and I think in there you stated that as far as the fuel subsidy cost, which is what it's called, you call it under recovery, it came out to 1.7 trillion naira fiscal year 2021. So just theoretically speaking here, if, we're to, if you didn't have to account for that cost and the market was deregulated, if you add that to your revenues, would that not make a significant difference in your bottom line? Uh, absolutely not, because what you should realize is that uh, that uh, subsidy uh, management uh, and import of product, we are actually doing it as an agency. Uh, in other words, it's an agency role. We are importing and selling at a subsidized price uh, based on uh, a, a capped price uh, approved by government. So therefore, it is for the account of the Federation. What happens in NMPC is that if we incur such costs, it is recoverable from the Federation. And it is in our accounts receivable until such a time the Federation is able to settle or we have Federation revenues that are available to offset such uh, uh, under recovery or subsidy as, as, as you might call it. But okay. the reality is that it does not uh, change our bottom line. Okay, fine. All right, let me let me let me use another let, let me use another another tactic here. Let's go back to your revenue breakdown. I'm still this is still on the same subsidies. If we look at your revenue breakdown from crude oil sales, petroleum product sales. Okay, so petroleum product sales, you did 3.6 trillion naira fiscal year 2021, a 60% increase. That includes PMS sales on the downstream side, um, uh, kerosene and also diesel. Now, if you were to sell your PMS in a deregulated market, if you were selling PMS at a market-determined price, would that, would that not also be translated to, to more revenue for you for as far as PMS is concerned, which would translate to product, petroleum product sales, which would also translate to what you're transferring over to the Federation account? You are absolutely right. Uh, the fact that uh, if the market is deregulated, then we are free to sell uh, on the basis of the prevailing market prices. Uh, of course, watching competition, and as the energy provider for the nation, we cannot be seen to also be uh, over profiteering. But that said, uh, it, is, it is quite correct to say that we will be making much more revenue and profit if we were to be operating in a deregulated market. Thank you for that. Um, I want to get to a quote in your financials and ask you about um, fuel and um, oil theft and also your uh, look, also look at the pipeline, how much you spent on pipeline management. If you look at a quote here, that you, the, the results said that um, the performance would have been greater if the operations in this year under review were free from incessant vandalism, crude oil, and product theft, among others. Also, if we look at some of your outlays, I think we have some of your other outlays here. I think you spent about 26 billion naira on pipeline management costs. You've also got um, crude and product losses there. Can you speak to us about how much this uh, crude oil theft uh, is impacting 
you know, your bottom line. And also, these pipeline management costs, um, are they also being impacted by the vandalism that's happening uh, in the country? All right, thank you very much. Uh, the reality is that uh, the vandalism has impacted uh, significantly to our performance, uh, especially in this era where you have high oil prices and we are operating at about 1.2 million barrels uh, on average. Uh, at a point in this country, we had reached 2.3 to up to 2.7 million barrels per day uh, just before COVID. Uh, but uh, with the incessant uh, vandalism and the theft, our operators can no longer tolerate uh, such uh, theft levels. That you send 100 barrels and you get probably 10 barrels at the, end, at the terminal. So as a consequence of that, some of them have declared force majeure and shut in. So it is deferred production and consequently deferred revenue for us and the nation. Uh, tax revenues and royalties have all declined significantly because we're unable to monetize the production uh, and therefore that has affected uh, us uh, significantly. Uh, if you talk of, uh, uh, on average, uh, OPEC quota of 1.8 million barrels, uh, which ordinarily we should be able to meet, but if we are doing at 1.2 million barrels, you are talking of 600,000 barrels per day. That uh, every three days, every two days, you are talking of uh, uh, almost $150 million down the drain. That's what the nation is, is, is losing uh, as, as, as we speak. And on the pipeline uh, contract, yes, we have a pipeline surveillance contracts on the products line. But these pipeline contracts have become actually a, a, a fetching ground for several communities living along the right of way. And you pump products, you don't get the product at the end of the depots. Uh, to the, uh, and, 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 and as a consequence of that, we have changed the uh, operating model to say let private sector come in, uh, invest their money, and uh, build, operate, and transfer uh, such that they can manage those pipelines and we guarantee them throughput to pass uh, the product through those lines. So that's how we intend to manage the pipeline uh, vandalism on the products line. Uh, sim similarly, on the crude line, we have also brought in security contractors to complement the efforts of the security agencies. Uh, and, and that is also uh, yielding some, some, some results. And we hope by the end of this month, October, uh, we should be able to see some good results uh, coming out of that. Oh, and when you say good results, because this, this matter of oil theft has been ongoing for so long, it, will it be, can it be reflected in the numbers in terms of, um, of output? I mean, for example, the breaking news now, o OPEC has announced, I think it's a two million barrel per day cut across the board. But it's being said that the effective cut is not really reflective of two million barrels a day because a number of OPEC members like Nigeria were not even meeting the prior thresholds that OPEC, so OPEC sets, which you've also mentioned. So as far as seeing an improvement in the reduction in oil theft, um, will we see that? Do you have a time frame from when we'll see that in the numbers, like in your monthly reports with respect to outputs? Because I think August, for example, was, it felt about 972, 975,000 barrels. So when, when can we see in the numbers, in the output, an improvement with what's being done to tamp, tamp, uh, clamp down on oil theft? Uh, yes, I think what I have said is that this, this significant work that is ongoing at the moment will see us uh, bringing back uh, production by end of October. And therefore, in terms of numbers, uh, what I mean is that the dollar in, in, in the bank, uh, you will begin to see that uh, in November because the crude is sold uh, uh, on a 30 day forward uh, credit basis. Thank you so much. The refineries, I have to ask you about the refineries, um, very much a, a topic uh, in the nation as far as the performance is concerned. We understand that some funds have been committed to turnaround maintenance. Can you give us an, an update? I think we understand, according to the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Timmy Presilva, that Protocol, for instance, should become partially operational by the end of the year. Can you give us any other um, outlook, expectations as to when the other refineries can, can come on stream? 
Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, Port Harcourt rehabilitation has commenced in earnest since uh, the contractor Technimont is working day and night to ensure that the old refinery comes into production uh, by Q1 of 2023. That timeline is still uh, 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 achievable. Uh, with worry also, we have also awarded the contract for a quick fix and the contractor has mobilized to worry and that work is commencing there. On the Kaduna refinery, we have also commenced scoping work by another, by the same contractor doing worry. Uh, once that is awarded, the contractor will also mobilize to Kaduna. Uh, so we are hopeful that uh, in 2023, we will see our refineries uh, working and, 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 and refining product locally uh, with our, with, and thus reducing the, the imports uh, of, of, of PMS from, from other countries. Thank you for that. Uh, uh, just a follow up because I'm actually literally looking through your financials now. They, was that accounted for as far as the maintenance for the refineries? Was that accounted for anywhere, I guess, in, um, in the costs or cost line item on the income statement for the financials? We didn't actually see anything referencing the, uh, referencing the refineries in the financials. Yeah, absolutely. There is a, it's part of the operating cost because the refineries too have to be kept at the minimum uh, 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 maintenance level. Uh, and also there is some uh, uh, basic minimum uh, staff requirement that you must keep uh, in the plant to ensure that uh, uh, when you now uh, want to start the refineries, uh, there are some parts that cannot be shut down completely. So uh, I will say that the running cost of the refinery, even though minimal, is part of our operating cost. And, and that has been captured before arriving at the uh, net profit that uh, we've declared. All right. Thank you so much for that. Um, in fact, we do have the, we're looking at those cost of sales. The, the costs, I mean, 5.3 trillion, 46% climb. I think you mentioned earlier in our, in our chat here that the NNPC is undertaking some cost management measures. So um, what, what I just, if, if you could please just touch on that. What are you doing as far as cost management members, manage measures to bring down costs in the next, uh, in fact, this financial year? Can you, can you touch on that for us very quickly? Uh, basically, what we have is that we have what implemented an automated uh, uh, funds management system uh, that ensures that businesses do not spend a certain percentage of the revenue they make. Uh, secondly, there is also cost optimization drive across the group that uh, businesses have what they have to respect uh, by way of cost to income ratio. So your cost of operation should not exceed certain percentage, percentage of, your, of your income. In addition to that, uh, we do have a, a, a series uh, of, of, of tender approval limits uh, set for the businesses. Uh, and, and, and therefore, the contracting the behavior in the past has significantly been curtailed that it is the uh, the authority uh, levels are observed and that the final say has to happen at the corporate headquarters. Uh, of course, without compromising operational efficiency and, and, and safety. So uh, a combination of all those, uh, and also we have tried to uh, optimize resources and uh, uh, expenditure where it is absolutely not necessary. And uh, that's why we also try to reduce the overheads in the refineries, to reduce the manpower levels there, and, and divert the such uh, workforce to other businesses that require additional workforce. So, so it's a total combination of our uh, transformation agenda of uh, transparency, accountability, and performance excellence that is yielding results for us. Thank you so much for that. And I'm glad you picked up on the manpower at the refineries. Um, sir, what, what would you say to those that say that if the refineries are not working and they're not putting anything, as far as output is concerned, can staff working at the refineries, can it still be justified that they receive salaries and still you know, contribute to overhead costs for the NM NMPC? 
Basically, people are saying they should be fired. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's what they're those, saying. Uh, I want to get your response to that. Uh, uh, and uh, I think it is not uh, 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 the right time for anybody to advocate uh, sacking of staff uh, at this time that the whole world, not only Nigeria, is challenged. Uh, to that extent, uh, those who say that uh, probably are also not engineers. You don't sh sh send out everybody in the refinery until you rehabilitate. Uh, in fact, you could as well say even the security should be taken away uh, uh, by the time you come back, then you probably you will not emit uh, a spanner in the, in, the, in, the, in the plant. So it is absolutely necessary that you have to keep minimum level of workforce, uh, that that asset's integrity is maintained, that when you come back to operate it, you are in a position to uh, operate it uh, uh, efficiently. Thank you for that. Um, I want to ask you about the NNPC's contributions, I guess, to the, to the nations financially. I mean, in the financials here, uh, I'm showing that the NNPC, as far as what was paid to the Corporate Affairs Commission to register the new name, you paid, and look, reading for the financials here, uh, 1.4 billion Naira. Uh, that's for 2021. You paid 1.5 billion for stamp duties to the Federal Indian Revenue Service. Uh, you tr about 1 trillion Naira was tr which paid to the uh, transfer to the Federation account. Dividends, uh, something else that's been uh, asked or has been talked about in, as far as what the NNPC can contribute to the nation. The IPO, the initial public offering that has been talked about, um, is that going to happen 2023 or is it you know, further out 2024, 25? When can we expect uh, a listing of the uh, NNPC on the, on the exchange here in Nigeria and maybe elsewhere, dual listing in another country? Uh, yes, first of all, I think you had alluded to the fact of, uh, that we made a contribution. It's not that the fact that we are not contributing uh, anything on a monthly basis at FAC meetings does not mean that NMPC is not contributing. What you have just said about uh, stamp duty and registration at CAC is peanut. Uh, if you check records with federal and revenue, we are the biggest and highest taxpayer uh, the whole of Nigeria. Uh, I have the award and certificate here in my office. Uh, uh, so in terms of contribution, a uh, combination of uh, taxes paid by our businesses and the corporate, and we at corporate level also, because it was a corporation before, we normally pay uh, uh, operating surplus to the Consolidated Revenue Fund. Uh, but now that we're a limited liability company, from 1st July 2022 onwards, that's when the Federation will expect dividend declarations from us. So that's that. But talking about the issue of IPO, uh, we have uh, yes said that by next year we should be IPO ready. IPO ready does not necessarily mean going into the stock market same year. You, there, are, there is a process for you to be able to go into the market and also access capital and attract uh, uh, over subscription. That's really our, our, our goal and driver. And so all our business processes, we're working on them to ensure that they're efficient enough that any due diligence that is done, whether it is legal, financial, or operational, that the company will meet the test of the uh, investors and as such, uh, the offer when made, whether it is local or offshore, will in reality attract uh, uh, interest and, and, and uh, over subscription. And, and that remains our goal. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I know we're running out of time. I really have to ask you about renewable energy and energy transition for Nigeria. COP27 is taking place in Egypt next month. Uh, the NNPC has talked about you know, being able to be part of a successful energy transition for Nigeria. What is your, what's your view on that, on, on how that will work um, with respect to where the world is going for renewables and, and so on and so forth? How is the NNPC positioning itself in that regard? Yes, we are part of that journey. And you know, uh, Mr. President had made commitment for 2060. Uh, but for us, we have always agreed and accepted that gas is our transition fuel. And so we are trying to accelerate and expedite gas projects, uh, gas to power, gas to industry. And that way, we're adding value in country to our gas resources, uh, thereby creating uh, not only jobs, 
but we're also creating manufacturing base and at the same time creating value uh, and therefore uh, eliminating poverty and indirectly also eliminating crime and criminality. Uh, I wanted to ask you also finally, um, it, it, NNPC could possibly see a leadership ch uh, a change, uh, possibly a shake-up if there is a change in, or rather I'm asking, excuse me, could NNPC see or be impacted by a change in leadership at the, after the elections uh, next year? To what extent could that impact the vision for everything you've put forward, the IPO, renewable energy? How, how would that, if there's a leadership change next year for Nigeria, how would that impact the company? I think the National Assembly has done a great job. They have done a PIA, which first of all protects the regulators. The regulators are most important, the upstream regulator and the midstream and downstream regulator. So that's one protection. This, with respect to NMPC Limited itself, uh, its board appointment is in the interim uh, from, the, uh, from Mr. President. But to, subsequent to IPO, uh, that authority moves to shareholders. So once that is done, then the, uh, uh, the, the tenor of the board and executive management of the company can have some certainty of, uh, of, 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 of timing and therefore commitment to performing excellently and sustaining the company to uh, the desired level. But uh, whether it is Mr. President or private shareholders coming to do the board appointment and executive committee, the key driver is performance. Uh, irrespective of who appoints you, if you are not delivering or performing, uh, I don't think uh, uh, whoever succeeds will keep you there if you're not performing. So the key word is delivery and performance. Uh, Mr. Umar Ajia, Chief Financial Officer, NNPC Limited, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate you taking us through your financials for 2021 and also giving us the outlook for the future. Thank you so much.